Hi everyone, and welcome back to my van build. For anyone new here, I'm James, and this is Yogi, my Nissan MV200, which I've converted into a tiny camper. Sorry it's been a while since my last video, it's been a really busy summer, but we've been getting out in the van loads around Cornwall where we live, as well as a trip up to Dartmoor. So this video seems like a great opportunity to have a look at how my van conversion efforts have held up with use, as it's been about a year since I completed the bulk of the work. But first, a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed so far and joined me on my van build journey. I've just hit 10,000 subscribers and I've been blown away by the support, the comments and the suggestions I've received along the way. Finally, before I get into the van stuff, we're now on Instagram. My partner Emma has set up a brilliant account sharing all of our adventures around Cornwall and further afield. So if you're interested in seeing what we get up to, please head on over to yogi.the.van and give us a follow on Instagram. Okay, that's enough from me. Let's get stuck into the van and see how it's coped with a year of camping, days out and adventure. When I started my van conversion, I didn't know what I was doing. And to an extent, I still don't. But I did it, I learned a lot along the way, and now I get to enjoy the results. But how do I know I've done the right thing, especially when it comes to insulation? Could using recycled plastic bottle and foil bubble wrap insulation really insulate my van from condensation and damp weather properly? It's time for me to put my money where my mouth is and look at the functionality of my van and then I'll have a peek into the wall cavities and see if the insulation is working or whether it's damp and covered in mold. So let's get started with the carpet. I'm so pleased I carpeted the walls instead of using heavy space consuming wood. The smoke grey finish hides a lot of marks and the carpet itself actually acts as an insulator reducing condensation. I stuck carpet over foil bubble wrap insulation in some areas namely the upper parts of the doors, which had no cavity and thus got heavily condensated when they were just bare metal. No problems in these areas either, and I'm pleased to say that the carpet still looks as good as the day I put it in. One of the areas I get asked about the most is the rubber trim around the doors and whether it's still stuck well. I did a lot of research into adhesives prior to doing the doors and they're still stuck solid. The only area I changed was to make a slight adjustment around the door handle so it did not the rubber every time I used it. Onto the floor and again no real problems. I've made a few marks and scratches on it, but other than that it just needs to be kept clean. The bed has been brilliant and for those who don't know I made it into three sections so I could fit a surfboard down the centre of the van. It can be a little stiff to pull out, but it's not much bother. I changed the drawer from metal sliders and a peg in the leg, which kept sliding out and opening, to a couple of wooden rails with a stop. As a result of the drawer being a tighter fit under the bed and thus moving the whole thing around when I pulled it out, I fitted a bolt to the far side of the bed, attaching it into a screw thread in the van. With the addition of the two turnbuckles, it's solid. Moving on, the curtain is still firmly in place. The headliner is still free from mold. And the storage box is working perfectly. It's vital storage, a nice footrest when sitting in the van, and support for the bed when it's pulled out. The table has been a real game changer. It's so sturdy and it's great having a large table to eat lunch or dinner on. I added some jars to store some of the most essential items we need when out and about. Coffee, snacks and charging cables. I keep a small gas stove tucked away in the top section along with my folding solar panel which doesn't see much use and above that sits the carbon monoxide detector. I swapped out the AAA powered LED ceiling lights for some USB chargeable ones meaning I can easily charge them from the battery if needed. Oh and I also gave the ceiling some varnish to protect it from condensation though there's been very little to speak of. The fairy lights are probably one of the most used features when camping as they transform the van into a real cosy space and are just bright enough so you can see what you're doing. Before I get into the insulation, literally, I'll mention the roof bars. There's another video coming on those as my original waterproofing efforts didn't quite go to plan. Anyway, on to the main question at hand. Is the insulation still okay? Is it working? Well, there's only one way to find out. If you watched my headliner removal video, you may remember I removed one of my ceiling plywood panels to see how the foil insulation was doing and I was really pleased to see that it was keeping condensation away. But the soft loft insulation, which is made from recycled plastic bottles, is a different matter. 
I thought I'd check the insulation in a couple of areas, the first being in the columns by the back doors. Before insulating the van, I knew condensation gathered here, so I was keen to check it out. But also, it was pretty easy to access. So here's the moment of truth. I'm really pleased to see that the insulation is dry and clean, and so is the inside of the cavity. One down, one to go. Time to stuff all the insulation back in and try somewhere else. The next area is one I was far more worried about. After all, who knows what is going on behind the door cards in those wall cavities. I chose this area because when I carpeted the van, I cut away a lot of carpet and just left the foil insulation exposed, which I now thought would be easy to cut through and then patch back up afterwards. I started by removing the door card, but the table was blocking the last panel clip's exit. So after a struggle, I bent the card out of the way. I sliced the foil bobber wrap and created enough space to pull some of the loft insulation behind it out. What a relief. The insulation looks as good as the day I put it in. Thinking about it, this insulation has now seen two damp British winters, so I'm pretty pleased about this. I swapped over to my phone camera so I could have a look inside the cavity. Again, the same story. It looked as good as when it was last sealed up. It puts my curious mind to rest knowing that things are doing okay on the inside of the walls of the van, and that someone with no experience can undertake a van conversion. Using a bit of foil tape, I sealed up the bubble wrap insulation and then replaced the door card. All right, so that's a bit of an overview onto how my van is doing after over a year of use. And I'm really pleased at how it's working. It's fitting on each really well, but it might make you wonder, is there anything I would change? And I think there's two main things I'd change. The first being the battery. I think it needs to be bigger. The one I've got is great for charging phones, for charging a laptop uh, and the LED lights, but I think having something bigger which could power heat and refrigeration would be a really good upgrade to the van. The second thing I changed would be to add some extra windows. Now, most people do these at the start of the van conversion. I had to see if I could do it having already carpeted on the inside. I think it would be an amazing upgrade to have the light out of the front and out of the back and to let a little bit more light in when we're sat in the van with the back doors closed. Mm -hmm.